Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Imagineers Disney Podcast. I am your host, Matt, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Susie. Hello! Hi! Hi, Matt! How was your Christmas? <clears throat> well, my Christmas was wonderful. Um, I would like to make an official apology to everyone. Uh, I promised that there would be a episode released on Christmas Eve, and uh, lo and behold, there was not. And that is because my voice was gone. I went to Disney World and came back and I uh, missed the park so much that I became sick. <laughs> Aw. Well, I'm, that's sad. So, feeling a little bit better now. You can probably still tell just, just a hair that it's a little little raspy. Mm-hmm. But, uh, uh, feeling... Is that because you were you were crying at the park? Right? Yes. Was, or was that a different member of your family? Uh, oh, well... <laughs> there were tears shed by by multiple people. So yes, my ten uh, month old. We went over to Epcot and American Adventure and had our very first picture with Santa Claus, and it was going so well. <laughs> she was reaching out to touch his beard and was like laughing and stuff. Yeah. The second she was put in his lap, gone, lost it. And we have uh, photo evidence, and it's amazing. So <laughs> that's cute, though. It's a cute little story memory to to have. Yes, that yes. interaction with Santa Claus. So. Then uh, more tears were shed at the uh, final viewing for oh, of me, illuminations of illuminations with the, with the holiday Christmas. Tag. Yes, yes, yes. So, but it was a wow. great trip. It was a great trip. Overall, stayed at Yacht Club um, for three nights. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll definitely have to do a review of Yacht Club here in the near future. Um, great resort. If you are looking for a resort that kind of has a, a different vibe to it, that that's the one. Like it's it's very <clears throat> it's very upscale, but it's kind of low mm-hmm. key. It's I think it's very relaxed. I didn't see a whole lot of kids there. I think it appeals to um, a more mature a more mature base. Yeah. Yeah, it, there it were doesn't kids. Seem... Don't get me wrong. There were kids. There's plenty of stuff to do there for yeah, kids. Yeah, but if you're wanting like a normal like Disney everywhere <clears throat> style of resort, I guess that's not it. Right. And, you know, because <clears throat> Yacht Club shares a pool with Beach Club, mm-hmm. and it is amazing. It is amazing. Storm along Bay. You got the wow. big water slide and the, uh, the pool with the sand bottom, which is fun, so... We had a. You're having a, a busy holiday season, aren't it was you? Very, it has been a very, very busy December. So, but we, it's almost over. Yes, it is almost over. Today is New Year's Eve, and uh, on this week's episode, we are actually going to take a look back at 2018 and just kind of um, go over what our favorite things were that we experienced in the Disney mm-hmm. parks, uh, in the Disney brand in general. And then we're going to take a little look into 2019 and what we're looking uh, forward to most as well. So um, we would love to hear from you. What was your favorite Disney memory from 2018? Did you go to the parks? Did you go on a Disney cruise? Did you even go out to Alani? Or maybe even an Adventures by Disney with your family? So, um, yeah, let us know. Uh, Leave us a comment in the comment section on Facebook. And uh, let us know what you thought about 2018. What about you? Any other, any just personal highlights from the year Disney related? Well, it was it was a big year in general for mm-hmm. for me, both personally and uh, you know, especially with family. Um, we did have um, our first child it was born in February, so mm-hmm. we took three three trips to Disney in her first year. I know we were very brave. Um, <laughs> We uh, we went over to Polynesian on the first trip, and just didn't do a whole lot. Just kind of hung out, mm-hmm. um, got our picture with Mickey, ate some food. Yeah, hung out I, at the resort again. Yeah, Mickey food. That those are pretty good highlights to do <laughs> for sure. <clears throat> but this last trip, I think, was um, more enjoyable. You could definitely tell uh, as she's getting older. She's recognizing things and Mm -hmm. uh, she loves mickey loves loves loves. i wonder why (laughs) Uh, so runs in the family so how about you uh i had a 
good Disney related. I had a good year in general, but yes, Disney related things. Uh, did my first party, Mickey's, mm-hmm. and it was a Mickey's very merry Christmas party. I enjoyed it, um, but I think I would like the Halloween one better. So maybe next year I can give it a shot. Scratch that off my my bucket list, which if you've been listening to this podcast has been increasing, like every week. Um, so I did that. I ran my first two course challenge with run Disney, um, was thoroughly exhausted, but forgot about that apparently a few weeks later and signed up for another one. So that was my, those are my two big, like firsts highlights, uh, for me personally of the year. And you know, those are great highlights. I mean, thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the run Disney episode, which you kind of took over and, um, I ran with posted. it. Yeah, you ran uh, okay. with it. No, but it was amazing. So if, if you are looking for great information on what Run Disney is, if you have never experienced any Run Disney race, go back and uh, listen to that episode. It was one of the very first ones that mm-hmm. we did. And uh, yeah, it's it's great stuff. So Yeah, and some new sign-up dates actually for uh, twenty late twenty nineteen early twenty twenty races are just a couple of months away, so oh maybe boy. think about that. Now, are you only doing Star Wars, or are you doing the Princess one too? I'm I'm just doing Star Wars this coming year. Uh, maybe twenty twenty, I'll do another just like standard one. But the Star Wars run is in April, and it's just kind of like in the middle of the year, so I don't really want to sign up for another one like pay to do two that close to each other. So we'll see. I'm thinking about what I want to do next. For sure. So, um, looking back on 2018, I think that um, it will be remembered not necessarily as a year of change, but as a year of transition. Um, There weren't really any major closures, except Mm -hmm. for um, if you are a fan of Stitch's Great Escape, we did we did lose that. Oh. Sorry to all twelve of you who liked that ride, because uh, we're not we're not part of that twelve. Nor is anyone I've ever met. Nor is anyone I probably would get along with. You know what? I need to stop angering so many people. Yeah, by not, Stitch. Not a, not a not a chili dog fan. <laughs> so yeah, so Stitch is gone. But you're right. We had a lot of um, things in 2017 that were promised for 2019 so in 2018 you know that like awkward in between year we're kind of like a a teenager like not we didn't lose too much but we're still kind of like oh we're just looking forward to what's coming next year but that don't discount some of the good things that did come this year it was still there were still enough uh just bridging the gap between like announcements and openings well i think one of the big things that we did gain this year was the addition of toy story land in hollywood yes. studios oh my so gosh so that was a major milestone for the park uh in my opinion so yeah yeah <laughs> they've got it's i love toy story land and, and you know we, maybe we talked about this on here before maybe just you and i have talked about it It'll, it, it has its few little quirks, kinks, little bugs, and it needs to maybe work out over time. You know, um, yeah, the budget, the budget, unfortunately, was cut quite a bit to, uh, to some of the attractions and the things in the land. Uh, I mean, there, there are some things I feel like could make the land a little bit better, but mm-hmm. there is an expansion pad in the land, so... Uh, maybe a little bit further down the road, we will see something. But I feel like it's missing a actual storefront. <clears throat> yeah, most how, definitely. How that was cut out, I don't know. But, and the AC that goes along with the storefront. Yes, there, there's there's a lot of open air stuff. Yeah. If you are in the park on a sunny summer day, you're probably going to get it rained on if you are in... Uh, line for slinky dog and Mm -hmm. i don't want to be negative all the time but slinky dog was awesome um Mm -hmm. i was just really impressed with how that turned out i was expecting something more along of goofy's barnstormer or yeah you know just kind of like a more kitty coaster type type deal uh if for those who go to the other place then place that shall not be mentioned universal (laughs) islands of adventure but like yeah, flight, yeah, of, flight of the Hippogriff, 
like a nice kid, a kid coaster, a family friendly coaster. And this is a family friendly, friendly coaster, but um, it's a little bit more intense. I feel like it's a nice bridge for uh, kids in your family who maybe not have experienced roller coasters. And this is their first time kind of getting acclimated and getting their feet wet and jumping in on a more adventurous attraction. Yeah. I was I was really impressed. That is a fun ride, especially at night when it's all lit up. Agreed, agreed. And speaking of it just being lit up, because um, noticing it during the day, during at night, and having been down there at Christmas time, it's themed very, very well. There's so many things to look at, and, and it looks different. Not like Pandora different, I guess, in the night versus the day, but just like the lights and everything are so cute. Christmas, everyone has little sweaters on and Christmas cookie looking characters. And it's a very um, well thought out attention to detail. It's, you know, it's not the, the biggest land, but that doesn't mean that they skimped any, um, like I said, attention to detail. Yeah, the attention to detail is incredible, especially with the kind of idea mm-hmm. of what the land is where you're shrunk down to the size of a toy so everything yeah. is everything is bigger um with the tinker toys and um the boxes that are kind of like stacked around the yard and like even even down to the bathroom so oh my gosh the yeah girl, the girl's bathroom is the box of cooties yeah <laughs> so so cute so really cute. great really great so uh there's just a lot of pixar stuff in general across the different parks. I know Disneyland got um, just some different Pixar love too uh, with Pixar Pier and other yes. adventure Loved Pixar, Pixar Pier. things. Yeah. After my uh, first little trip to Disneyland, but yep, the Incredicoaster and Cars Land is phenomenal. So, but um, yeah, good stuff. I think that's probably just like the biggest park Thing that happened that opened this year we got a lot of previews and like some reveals that we mentioned a couple of weeks ago of different um attractions and resort updates coming but in terms of things opening i think i think that's that's pretty much it that's a and it's a it's a significant marquee thing but yeah 2019 is just gonna yeah and blow it out of the like water. i said uh, like I said, you know, this this was kind of a year in transition. And when I say that, there was just a lot of construction. Um, mm-hmm. There, I feel like there is so much construction now in and around Walt Disney World. It's probably the most construction outside of building a physical park that yeah. they've ever had at one time. So, I mean, you have resorts going up left and right. You have mm-hmm. a new transportation system, which we will get to here shortly in our <gasps> looking forward to 2019 segment of this episode. Uh, uh. But um, yeah, so there's lots of construction and I know maybe that has turned away some crowds. I think they're kind of waiting for for the big the big 2019 things to hit. But, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, 2018 I thought was great, so yeah also transition in 2018 not just like for the parks um we had a lot of movies that are kind of maybe not, transition isn't the right word for them but more of like setup mm-hmm. movies in 2018 most notably infinity war yes very much so the big old so so sad oh it just came on oh, that's gonna be soon. loud that's that's loud that's gonna be loud i'm gonna do a little softer snap there you go there's thanos snapping i, I can't and, snap and and everyone that's, that's why i wasn't cast as thanos they're like oh <laughs> she can't snap <laughs> i can't it's one of my give, give josh brolin a run for his money i did it was it was really close had to make some calls about that but yeah infinity war uh obviously sets up for the big I still say Avengers finale. It's called Endgame. We know we're probably going to see a lot of characters uh, die. Um, most notably, like some of those core Avenger characters. Yep, I think uh, probably Cap. Cap for sure. Cap for sure. I feel Iron Man's gone. I just... Maybe. I, 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 I just... I don't know. Probably. Just prepare for the worst. Like, it can't get, like, too... You can't have as many deaths as you, there were in Infinity thought, War. So. You thought Infinity War was bad? 
Yeah. They're not permanently gone, folks. I mean, I know, back. but it's still it's still sad. This, no, so these this guys one's, are gone. This one's this one's gonna hurt. This one's gonna hurt real bad. Yeah. <sighs> uh, also, some big movies. Uh, maybe we can touch on this one without being too spoilerly spoilery. Spoilery. Without spoiling, spoiling, without telling too many details. Um, recently, is Mary Poppins Returns <laughs> came out. Big deal. Movies nominated for like multiple Golden Globes and all those fancy award things. Uh, and in our opinion, for good reason. Yeah. Um, I. Uh, it is a Christmas tradition in our household to go see a movie at Christmas. We've been doing it for several years. So we all go over and watch whatever is in theaters and we were like Mary Poppins and let me tell you like I was just I don't, I don't want to say I was surprised but I mm-hmm. was just really really happy how everything turned out um, I think they did a great job honoring the yes. legacy of the first film uh, with Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke and Walt Disney himself. I think mm-hmm. I think I think this is something that Walt would have been proud of. Yeah. Um, considering and it's such a personal right uh, project to him. Yes, and uh, and if 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 you ever have a chance, if you really want to get a really great look at what Mary Poppins meant to Walt, go watch the movie Saving Mr. Banks, starring Tom Hanks. As well, co-starring a box of tissues. <laughs> yes. um, and it, it's it's the story of how Walt acquired um, the rights uh, through much difficulty from mm-hmm. P. L. Travers, and uh, just the relationship between him and her. And you get a look on uh, the Sherman brothers and how they scored one of the most iconic soundtracks of all yes. time. Yeah. And um, I love that um, the new movie, um, Mary Poppins Returns, you're right, it, it pays homage in so many ways. Um, but it's still, I don't know, it's still like its own thing, but it just, it fits in very, very well. I don't think it loses any of the magic. It's 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 different, um, but not in like a disrespectful we know that this worked before, so let's try it again type of way, if you know, that makes sense. And I think what what uh, that's a great point. It, 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 does, it went its own way. And the first film was very innovative when it mm-hmm. came to uh, like the scene, the mixed animation scene with the yes. live action. That was a big deal when that was created. And I think they uh, took that and expounded on that and the technology that's available especially for the animated sequence oh yeah the in, animated in sequences the are film. beautiful so, and we're not going to go into well any done. detail but um just i came away just really impressed with how they did everything it was very subtle there are some subtle nods to mm-hmm. uh, the original mary poppins but absolutely go see it it is a great film for uh, you and your family to go see during the holidays and uh, I cannot wait to watch it again. Thank goodness the music's on Spotify. <laughs> right? So, such, such great music. Such yeah. great music. So. All right. I think that's kind of, is that is that like your 2018 Yeah, I, I think so, yeah. Okay, okay. So 2019 let's... is going to be <sighs> the bomb. <laughs> yes. So uh, 2019. Oh, boy. Uh, where to even begin? Uh, I know where I'd like to begin, but I'll let you go ahead. Uh, I know exactly where you're going to go. Mickey's mm-hmm. Runaway Railway. Oh, my gosh. Is you that know the top so of your well. list? Oh, my gosh. You're such a good co-host. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, boy. You're in my brain. But, yeah, that for real does open next year. Yes, I'm it does. write it. I'm uh, looking forward to it. So I think it's going to be great. Be so cute, I'm sure. I mean, Mickey finally gets his own attraction, like an actual ride. Yeah, and during the 30th uh, anniversary, 30 years of Hollywood Studios, so two pretty big milestones at that park. Yes, First absolutely. Mickey ride and the big 3-0. So uh, there's that. That'll be coming later on in, I think, late summer, early fall, I believe is yeah. when they um, are coming out with that. So 
So mm. we know the big thing. We're gonna save that for last. Uh, oh my gosh! Okay. Let's let's Bye. talk let's talk about the Skyliner. <laughs> the what? The Skyliner. Oh yes. So uh, the let's. Sky, yes, getting very close to that as well, um, and I think they've been actually running some recent tests on it. But construction is well underway and very close to being done. With um, you can't miss it. There's I would say like a third of property is in some way involved with it it's just like you see it or the parking lots are blocked off right so it's, it's been going on for a while too yep and it's going to connect hollywood studios with pop century and art of animation and then also caribbean beach and the back of world showcase mm-hmm so, um, as you're coming, if and if you go back into World Showcase right now, I, I think it's going to give you actually a really, really unique sight line into the back of World Showcase. Um, I think it's going to be a really, really great photo op. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, so, not sure how it'll look seeing backstage of all of the pavilions. I'm sure they'll I... think of something to kind of disguise that a little bit but uh maybe yeah that that's going to be a cool, cool view i think so um so there's that and then uh <sighs> well just go ahead go ahead Susan. oh my gosh you guys galaxy said just finally gonna open next year <laughs> ah! <laughs> and we're gonna be their opening day right uh yeah i mean for as ex- for as is as excited as you are, I mean, I am you excited. Out. Um, like the good old days with uh, Star Wars weekends. Won't be the first time that I have waited out. outside the gates of of Hollywood Studios. Yes, so yeah, it's gonna be a madhouse. Uh, so Galaxy's Edge at Disney Land opens late summer or midsummer, probably July, mm-hmm. and then we get it in the fall. So late fall, uh, we have a quite a, a while to plan our course of action i'm calling it now december 20th i think that's when it'll be december 20th i think it'll be december 20th wow that's or right before. technically the fall because i think the first day of winter is like the 22nd exactly oh wow look at us like walking almanacs um but yeah there's gonna be a ton of people that day and if you tuned into um the parade on christmas day got a nice little behind the scenes uh, preview of what's been going on and we got some details about the two rides so there's a the Millennium Falcon obviously this is a big one that everyone is yes. excited for get to finally go in the cockpit and just push a bunch of buttons because that's what Han does like, he has buttons. no idea what's going on 200 like buttons banging your arms on the wall pressing everything that'll be fun uh, but the big ride that I think everyone is most excited for is Rise of the Resistance mm-hmm Cause that, that is going to be, uh, what's their exact quote? Like basically like the biggest, most elaborate undertaking of a ride basically they've that ever they've done. ever done. And considering they gave us Pandora just a couple of years ago, flight of yeah. passage, uh, that is saying something. Yeah. The bar is very high. So we'll see. So it's going to be so good. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's going to be massive. You're in some type of cart and you're moving around and there's shooting and there's stormtroopers and there's a resistance that's rising. It's just going to be good. <laughs> it's going to be great. And in, in addition to um, the rides, there's going to be a cantina. So they're pulling in a cantina and it looks like there's actually going to be like a full service restaurant or like a dinner club type type deal. So very, very special some blue uh, theming. Milk. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> blue! You know, blue milk is coming. <laughs> it's gonna be great. It's it's the next butter beer, guys. It's the next butter beer. I can I, feel it. I I definitely must agree with you. Um, and also the cool thing about Galaxy's Edge, if you've seen anything, obviously it is just massive. Um, and I think also part of this, the big undertaking with this is not just the size and the technology, but I think this is going to be the most immersive experience that Mm. we have at Disney, probably hands down, especially in another year and a half or or from, well, from this point, I guess, maybe a year and a half or two years when the resort opens up and you have that full experience of being 
on another planet. Yeah, the when the hotel opens, it is going to forever change, I think, the way that um, the entertainment industry, especially the amusement park mm-hmm. industry, um, does things. Yeah. Especially parks that have hotels attached to them, uh, specifically Universal, um, even Dollywood up in Tennessee has mm. a hotel attached to it. Sure, so, true. You know, who knows what we'll do with that. But um, the level of immersion that we are expecting that guests will experience um, when they stay at the hotel and then transition into Galaxy's Edge. We're never going to want to leave. Like, what's <laughs> the real world? <laughs> So it, let's just run around with aliens all day and yeah it's it, it's gonna be a game changer but uh uh that's that's huge but I don't I don't think there's anything else park I mean that's a lot of changes really coming yeah that, all is, that to is a lot. the same area um I think those are the big things the property. uh those are the big things for 2019 um I don't think we'll see the new illuminations uh replacement official replacement there is going to be a temporary show but right. the um uh official replacement probably won't be coming until 2020 uh along with the guardians of the galaxy coaster mm-hmm. uh ratatouille um and then tron in 2021 i would imagine for the 50th 50 anniversary, years anniversary, of so. magic kingdom but right. yeah Okay. Those are so that's in the park. That's in the park. So but outside the park. Yes. Yeah, so let's talk about uh just a couple of movies very briefly. It's a big slate. Mm-hmm. Uh so let's start at the beginning of the year with Dumbo. We're gonna have Dumbo in March. I'm I'm yes, that looks very cute. Well oh cute isn't the right word. It looks good. Yeah, and it's um <laughs> it's not as like huggable, I guess. Looking Burton, as you might think, Dumbo is yeah, it's a Tim Burton it's a Tim version. Burton movie, so it looks, but it I'm really cool. excited to see how he does it. And um, judging by the trailer, I really like. So, like, I'm a big film person. I was a film major um, in college. So, but I I love the uh, the scenic design and just mm-hmm. the the overall feel of it. I think it looks it looks very cool. So, um, so Dumbo, and then uh, then we have what we talked about before the conclusion of the avengers saga all right uh, Pete, everybody <laughs> and everyone in the theater because it's going to be heartbreaking yep uh avengers in game where uh we will see what happens with thanos and how he is hopefully being yeah I'm, I'm really excited to talk about that one well, after we've sure. seen it and for sure then uh, we have aladdin Okay, hold on though. I want to get your opinion on something. Okay. Pictures, you know, came out yes. uh, about ten days ago, maybe maybe two weeks. Mm-hmm. Thoughts? What are you? How are you? How are you feeling about it? I I'm excited for it. Um, okay, good. I, I know a lot of people <laughs> were like, for some strange reason, upset that Will Smith. Will Smith is playing the genie, by the way. Oh, um, hating on the genie for not being blue. For not being blue. I'm like, this isn't a cartoon. Right. This is this is live action. Like live. Right, and like I hate to spoil this for everyone, but guys, like genies aren't real. So there's no monopoly on what they look like. Like they can be blue or they can look like, you know, Will Smith and be real cool. And if if any of you have had the fortune of going to see Aladdin live on Broadway, um, the genie in the show, surprise, was not blue. <gasps> oh my goodness. But was hysterical, hilarious. And each one kind of added their own unique um, like feel to, to the mm-hmm. character and, and just their uh, unique sense of style and humor. And, and I, you know Will Smith's going to do that. And I expect the kill it. exact same thing from Will Smith. I think it's going to be great. So give it a chance. Give it a chance. Yeah, and it looks it just looks really colorful, the movie, some of the behind the scenes pictures. Mm-hmm. Um it just looks it looks like a beautiful, beautiful movie. So speaking, if you don't like Will Smith, I'm sorry. Speaking of beautiful movies. Oh. 
Oh my god. This is this is the I one know where that, you're going. This is the one I think I am <laughs> most looking forward to. Even, oh, I'm for sure most looking forward to this one. Even more, and as much as I love Star Wars. And, oh, I don't think so. And episode nine comes out at the end Here's... of December. But I think I might be looking forward to this one oh. maybe just a little bit more. I, I don't know. I hate, I hate that I have to disagree. And the only reason... Okay, so... Okay, we're talking about Lion King. Yes. Um, so the live action CGI remake of Lion King. And here's why I'm looking forward to episode nine next December uh, more. Because I don't know exactly how they're going to do Lion King differently. But like I know what happens in Lion King. That's true. And I have no idea where episode nine is going to go and how they're going to get there. But it's close. I am stoked for this movie. The cast is stacked. It looks beautiful. It's, the music. It's Lion King. It's going to be great. It's going to be so good. Yeah, like Lion King I th- is, is my favorite Disney animated film. I think it is a masterpiece. Uh, yes. So... Um, Especially considering like everything that went down during the production mm-hmm. of of the film, so like uh, the animators for the Lion King were like Disney's B team because all of the A team was put on Pocahontas because they thought yeah. Pocahontas was going to be more popular. You guys don't know we love singing lions and sarcastic meerkats. <laughs> so brilliant film, beautiful film. Beautiful music, and uh, yeah, looking forward to see what they do with the. Uh, <laughs> there's there's the other debate: is it live action? It's or is not it... <laughs> live action, and Jungle Book barely counts. You have one real person. One. Yeah, so, it's still so, animation, but it's computer it's, generated. It's 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 yeah. different. It's a different beast. So it's gonna be so good. It's gonna break all the records. Oh, I, I think it could easily be one of the top grossing films of all time once it's all said and done so because i'm gonna go see it like every day no that doesn't make sense but i'll see it a lot (laughs) i'll see it more than once for sure oh definitely and then i'm definitely gonna have to see episode nine more than once yes so uh yeah episode nine is the last i think big movie of 2019 that they have Uh and can we talk about how it's just under a year away and we don't have a title? I think we'll have one soon. I hope we have one soon. I think we will. So um, probably have a little teaser one. Teaser as well. So, mm, so Well, when celebra- celebration is in April. the summer. Oh, it's in April? I it's thought it April. was a little later. Yeah, well, we should have a full trailer by then. Oh, yeah, I would absolutely. Think. Full trailer in April um, that they'll premiere at uh, Celebration, which is in Chicago this year. Um, but we'll hopefully have a teaser here the next couple weeks, hopefully. I'm not going in with any expectations, though, for real. I, I nope. have things that I would like to happen, but that's why I initially did not like The Last Jedi. <gasps> it's because, no, initially. no, I walked out of the theater, and I was disappointed that what I, I, loved uh, it, I was expecting wasn't there. So I'm going to go with no expectations. We won't go into a whole Last Jedi no, no, rant, no, no. but... I liked it. That's all. I say. did too. It just took me a second to process. To process what what happened. Yeah. yeah. I understand that. It was so. a lot. Yeah. So that's a but that's a big movie. Not just because it's Star Wars and because it's in our giant list of um, all the exciting things for next year. Last movie in the Star or the Star Wars the Skywalker saga, uh, where we see that family how far they've come through nine movies. Uh, it'll be ending so very sad and of course there's a lot of other um places for star wars to go and one of those places is off of the big screen mm-hmm. onto your computer screen your phone screen i mean i guess your tv screen too if you have anything anyway streaming <laughs> uh there's going to be disney's big exciting streaming service disney plus comes out in 2019 so if you've already have so, huh? so if you've noticed all those things that are leaving Netflix under the Disney uh, branding like Moana, oh, yeah. I'm sure you all heard the um, the wails and the weeping and gnashing of teeth that were... Um, I did gnash. My the, teeth were gnashing for 
a there long was a time. disturbance so of there was a disturbance in the force um, <laughs> no but uh so yeah those things are leaving but we'll be coming back very mm-hmm. soon with uh, yeah the streaming yes yeah, so and it's not just movies like moana um tying us back into what i was saying about star wars it's it's going to be all disney property so marvel movies star wars movies and original content mm-hmm. movies and tv shows just for this kind of like netflix and hulu and amazon have their own content disney plus will too um and so that's where you'll have to catch the new star wars tv show when it comes out live action called the mandalorian mm-hmm. and it looks ooh, it looks really good so exciting so exciting yeah so like is it 2019 yet or what that's close, I guess. We're really, really We're close, close, but yep. still far away from some of these like, things. Depending on when you listen to this, it might already be 2019. So. <laughs> if not... Happy New Year. Have, see you next year. Oh, that joke is so lame. I don't care, though. It's funny. So, but <laughs> speaking of New Year, um, we are recording this. Uh, we're airing this on uh, New Year's Eve, so... Uh, we, as your host, um, would like to personally thank you for tuning in to the podcast this year. This is our first year. Uh, we're coming up on our anniversary in April, but so far it has been an amazing ride, and we have really loved uh, doing this every week for you guys and just uh, giving you good information and just sharing the ex- our excitement with you mm-hmm. and hoping that s- some of that rubs off and gets you excited for uh, things that are coming to the Disney parks and um, the Disney brand in general, um, but I think uh, I think that's going to do it for this week and for this year. Wow! Oh my gosh! Here we go. But wow, um, how time flies when you're having, having a fun. blast talking about Disney on a podcast. Like, how cool is that? It's it's so much fun and it's a blast, and we cannot wait. For 2019 and what the future has in store for us and for you in general as well so thank you for listening and we hope you have a very happy new year and uh, until 2019 remember if you can dream it you can do it happy new year everyone yeah happy new year <laughs>